Scientists are terrified by what's happening at the Grand Canyon. New discovery. What if there was a lost city buried beneath the Grand Canyon? Archaeologists have made a shocking discovery of a hidden underground city believed to belong to giants. It's no secret that modern cities have underground passageways, but a whole city under the Grand Canyon? This discovery has sparked a debate about history that may have been deliberately hidden from us. What else could a Grand Canyon be hiding? Could it be an underground Egyptian city? Watch the video to learn more about this incredible discovery. And remember to subscribe to our channel for the latest updates on this and other fascinating stories. Like numerous modern cities, Chicago has a mystery that few people know about. It has miles of underground tunnels that let people get from one place to a different one without getting caught in rough weather. Los Angeles, Boston, New York, and Dallas have a network of tunnels under the ground. However, within the Grand Canyon, a whole underground city that is thought to belong to giants has been found. Explorers would never see all of the Grand Canyon's history, which goes back thousands of years. A portion of it is passed each day by hikers and other explorers who do not know about it. However, what about the parts of history that have been kept from us? History is kept secret not just to safeguard historical places, but also because it will change what we have all learned about history. Can that even happen? Could there be an underground Egyptian city in the Grand Canyon? Let us keep the story going. In the early 1900s, chance brought us to the entrance of the best-known underground city of giants. It was a huge find in the Grand Canyon, and the news immediately picked it up. Gazeta de Arizona wrote in an article on April 5, 1909, that the Grand Canyon was the birthplace of a culture with individuals of cyclopean proportions. This culture just left a few buildings as proof of its existence. The article talks about how an explorer named G. E. Kincaid accidentally found a vast underground city while rafting on the Colorado River. Kincaid became a renowned archaeologist and the Smithsonian Institution helped pay for his work. The description said that the entrance to this strange cave was at the end of a tunnel that went more than 1,600 meters underground. Kincaid was amazed by how hard it was to get into the cave. The entry was about 450 meters below the steep wall of the canyon. The place was in a government-protected area, and getting there meant paying a fine. The entrance to the cave was situated on a shelf that could not be viewed from the river. I became interested when I saw chisel marks on the wall inside the entrance. I went in with my gun, Kincaid said. The architecture in that underground city showed that the people who built it were talented engineers. The central entrance to the underground city looked like a huge camera from which passages spread out like the spokes of a wheel. The walls of the main chamber were covered with copper weapons and tablets with symbols and hieroglyphic writing that looked a lot like those in Egypt. Inside a citadel, mummified bodies were found, which was another interesting finding. All the mummies found were wrapped in dark linen and were at least 2.74 meters tall. Kincaid said he took a picture of one of them with a flashlight, but no one could find a picture. More research turned up interesting information about what the supposed giants of the city believed. More than 30 meters from the room's entrance was a plant shaped like a cross and an idol that might have represented the most important god in their religion. He sat with his legs crossed and held a flower in each hand. Like the carving in the cave, his face had Asian features, even though this idol looked a bit like Buddha. But researchers could not say for sure that it was from that religious group. The article also talked about how ceramics and other artifacts from other nations around the globe were found. Archaeological finds might not often show a variety of cultures, so this could be a significant finding. White was the color of the last camera they found on the expedition. After the Great Hall, Kincaid and his partner, Professor S. A. Jordan, found the mummies and what they assumed was a ceremonial crypt. According to Kincaid's report, the strange hieroglyphics that the Smithsonian Institute is seeking the key to being on all the urns, walls, over doorways, and stone tablets discovered by the image. Most probably, the carving on the tablet has something to do with the religion of the individuals. 
Similar hieroglyphs have been found in the southern part of Arizona. Only two animals are shown in the pictures, one from a long time ago. The mummies were found in one of the largest tombs or crypts. The walls of this tomb or crypt sloped, backed at an angle of about 35 degrees. There are tiers of mummies on these, each with its own carved shell. In the middle of each is a small bench with cups, made of copper and pieces of broken swords. A few of the mummies are made of clay, and the others are made of bark fabric. The urns and cups on the lower shelves are rough, but the pots on the higher shelves are more refined, which shows that they are from a later time. All of the mummies looked at so far have been men. There are no children or women buried here. This seems like the outer part was where the warriors slept. One theory says the cavern could have been home to up to 50,000 people. The cave serfs or slaves are the ancestors of the Indian tribes that live in Arizona today. People who were very advanced in their culture resided here thousands of years before the Christian period. The things found did not include animal bones, skins, clothes, or bedding. In many rooms, there is nothing but a place to hold water. Cooking tools were found in a room that was about 40 feet by 700 feet. This room was probably the main dining hall. No one knows what these people ate. But it is thought that in the cold season, they went toward the south and planted in the valleys. Then, in the warmer months, they went back toward the north. Archaeologists have assumed what kind of culture and people used to live in that city, but they have not been able to figure out the answer to this question. The Hopi Indians have a story that their ancestors lived in the Grand Canyon's underworld until there was a split between the good and the evil, or the individuals of one heart and the individuals of two hearts. Their leader, Machado, told them to leave. However, there was no way out. The chief then grew a tree that went through the roof of the underworld, and the folks with one heart climbed out. They started growing wheat and maize along the Red River, which is now Colorado. They sent a message to the Temple of the Sun asking for harmony, kindness, and the folks of one heart to be in charge. That messenger never returned, but old men from the tribe can still be seen in hobby villages at sundown, looking up at the sun as searching for the messenger. When he returns, they will return to their territories and old homes. There are two different ideas about where Egyptians came from. One theory says they came from Asia, while the other says they came from the area around the Upper Nile. In this article, an Egyptologist said that he thought the Egyptians came from India. The things found in the Grand Canyon may help us learn more about how people have changed over time and about the past. The article, sadly, does not say much about this revelation. This mysterious underground city is not talked about or written about officially. The Smithsonian Institute says it does not know about the underground city. However, the city of giants that was lost and found became a national park. How? Theodore Roosevelt loved the Grand Canyon. He returned to Lake Powell and the Grand Canyon numerous times to look around and appreciate the region. In 1908, he made the Grand Canyon a national monument, and in 1919, it was made a national park. The archaeologists need to find more hints and proof so that everyone can see for themselves. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and give it a thumbs up to help us create more high-quality content. Thank you for tuning in.